Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with Unity Mars. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to face tracking with Unity Mars, where I'm going to be showing you how to capture different poses from different parts of your face. We're going to be able to get information about our nose, about our mouth, also about the ears and different poses. These are actually called landmarks, so I'm going to be using what's called a landmark visualizer. We're also going to be using a face mask preset that Unity provides to you. And I'm also going to show you how we can use pre-recorded information to actually capture information from different faces that Unity Mars provides. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so this is the demo that I created to demonstrate how this works. I'm actually going to be recreating the whole thing, but let me just show you this video. So you can see that the video shows the screws on my, on my ears. I also have, you know, the pixels on the eyebrows moving my upper lip and bottom lip. You can see the pixel moving in there and also the pixel on the chin and also the nose and also my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this works by just walking you through the whole project. All right, guys. So this is a scene that I created and I'm going to just go ahead and recreate it so you guys know how to set everything up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into create and we're going to be just creating a brand new scene. Just click on scene. I'm just going to call this one test two. And then double click on it. And as soon as you double click on it, there's not going to be anything on it. We're going to have a main camera. I'm actually going to remove the main camera. And if you look on the left side, I have the Mars panel. So here we have the presets, the primitive visualizers, and also the simulated synthetic components. So what I'm going to do for face tracking, we're going to be creating a face mask. So as soon as you click on that, it's going to be bringing in the mesh and also all the different landmarks. So when they refer to landmarks, they're basically referring to different parts of the face. So if we were to open up the face mask, you're going to see that we have the left eye, we have the right eye, and not only we have those components, but we also have everything set up for us. So we have what's called a landmark controller, which basically designates what part of the face we're going to be tracking a pose. So you need to tell it, okay, what's going to be the source? So in this case, it's going to be this component here. And then you need to tell it what location. In this case, I'm looking at the, the upper lip. So this one is set to the upper lip. If you didn't want to do all of these ones, let's say you only wanted to do left or right eye, you can also delete all of these ones. And it's only going to be generating the post information for the ones that are in the hierarchy. You also need to tell it the output, right? Like in this case, the output is going to go to the script. Like even if you open the script, you're going to see that the script has also the posting information. So if you needed to get a hold of that data, you can always, you know, write another script that is going to give you that information. So if we go here and we look at the landmark output post, you're going to see that the post information is in here, which has the rotation and also the position of, of that landmark. Let's go ahead and close this and don't save. All right, so how do we actually, you know, make changes on these and how do we add components to it so that we can add, you know, like I did, we had a screw, we have different pixels. So that's what I want to show you on, on how to do it. But before we get into that, I want to show you a couple more things. So we have the face mask and we have all the different landmarks, different components of the face. They also have something called the, the simulation, right? Like you want, to, you want to be able to simulate this. And to do that, I'm going to be bringing in the device view and also the simulation view. Probably do something, I think that's going to work. And then you're going to have two different people in here that have simulated data. One of them is going to be Amy, and the other one is going to be is Cohen. So if we select Amy and we hit play, you're going to see that Amy is going to show at some point in here, which we can see she's opening her mouth. She's moving her head a little bit. Looks like her eyebrows as well are going up and then, you know, smiling. So we can also see it on the simulation view, right? You see a little happy face in here. And this is our, our landmarks. They're all moving, but we can't really see. I mean, we can see these ones, but they're not visible in the device, in the device view. So if we wanted to test that, let's say that you don't want to add any 3D models, custom 3D models. You can also add a visualizer. So if you go into under visualizer and then click on face landmark visualizer, it's going to be, what this does is basically creates a sphere primitives for you. So, and you can also, you know, designate what the scale of that is going to be. This is by default 0 0.01, which I think is a good size. So if we were to hit play, you're going to see that now we're going to be seeing spheres, right? Because this MR phase landmark visualizer is the one that is creating spheres at the position of the different poses that it found through the landmark. So, Okay, so that's cool, Dilmer, but that doesn't look as cool as your demo that you show us in the beginning, and that's what I'm going to show you on how to do it next. So what I ended up doing is I downloaded an asset. This asset is paid, so I'm going to be putting that in the description of this video. I can't really share this code because 
this is, you know, somebody, somebody made it and that person is selling it, so I can't really give it to you for free. But what I can do is I can show you, you know, how to do this and you guys can recreate it. If you need this code and this project, let me know and I can take some of these assets out and I can put some other placeholders. Just let me know if that works better for you. So what I ended up doing is this asset has a lot of different, you know, 3D models. They have, you know, docs, they have Pixar, they have letters, they have a lot of cool things that, you know, I, I could play around and that's what you saw on the beginning of this video. But these, are, these ones are giant, right? Like if I were to add, for instance, the ant, the ant is just gonna be just giant. It's not, it's not in the, you know, in the scale size of the of AR components because we're, we're, you know, we're dealing with meters. So I wanna make sure that we make those a lot smaller. So what I ended up doing is I, I grabbed some of those and I created prefab variants. So you can see that I have a ball here and the scale here on the right, it's 0 0.02. You can see that I also have the exclamation mark, also the hat, also the, you know, the hand variant, the knot, and also the pizza variant. So I, I resize those for you so you guys don't have to worry about it. So when it comes to actually dragging and dropping some of these components, I wanna show you some of these features in here because these are going to allow you to snap it into a position on the face. So you can snap and drag by holding the shift button. You can also, you know, change if you want to force the orientation to be looking, you know, where the face is looking towards. So you can also use, you also have some other settings in here that I haven't really played with you, that you can play with uh, as it, you know, as, as it relates to positioning some of these objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with something small. So we're just gonna go ahead and move this down here. And that way we have more real, real stay on the face. And I can get a little closer in here. You can see the whole face in here. Another thing that I can also mention to you, these placeholders, these are gizmos. You can also change the size of the gizmos. So you can, you know, you can make it bigger here. If you wanted to make it bigger for some reason, you can change the color. You can also tell the pose not to have any orientation. Maybe you don't need to calculate orientation. If you don't want to see poses axis, you don't, you can uncheck that. And then so on. That, that's just really helpful. It's just gizmo information and also this is also ignoring rotation. So you can use that. You can do that for every single one of these ones. So if you wanted to change them all, you can also change them all. And I think I can select them all at the same time and change them. Yep, you can do that if you wanted to do that. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and focus on the eyes, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hold my shift. And as I drag it and drop this component, you're gonna see that it has the placement option. So, and it's really cool because it shows me, it doesn't only show me where it's gonna place it, in the, you know, in the 3D model, but it actually puts it under that game object. So if I were to add an eye here and let it go, you're gonna see that it gets placed on the right eye. If I were to add another eye in here, let me go ahead and try that one more time. Drag it and drop it perhaps, there we go. Let me try that one more time. I think my kid was playing with my keyboard and he ended up just ruining the whole keyboard. Let me try that one more time, there we go. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of a laugh there on the video and then I think these ones are way, way too small. I think on the demo I did something like 0.3, but you can resize them, right? Depending on what you're, what you're looking for. I'm gonna do 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. I think that's fine. And we can do probably something like that on, on the right eye. There we go. So we have those two eyes in there. I'm gonna select them both and I'm actually gonna go 0.3. I think they're, they're, just, they're just giant at that point. So there we go. We have just two balls on our eyes. So what if we wanted to do the screws, right? So we can do the screws and I'm gonna put them right in here. And you can see how it starts rotating as I move my mouse. So I'm just gonna place them in there and then just, you know, then get your artistic style going so that you can, you can do, you know, you can do something cool and have fun by, by doing this. So the, the idea here is that you, you know, you're going to be playing with these and then you're gonna be creating multiple effects just like, you know, Snapchat does with some other filters. Obviously this is a lot simpler than that, but you can see how, how we can really extend this. So we can just put maybe this one right here. I think that's what I did on the, on the demo. And the reason why I didn't have the screw going in is because I'm not using human occlusion. You can do that as well if you wanted to use, you know, the a a AR occlusion manager. And then it basically will just allow you to use the occlusion on the, on the face. If you do it right now and I were to have this intersect the the actual you know, face is going to look like I have the screw in front of my head, which it doesn't really look realistic. So that's what I'm saying, use the occlusion manager. And then let's see, we can do, maybe we just do a pixel on the chin and let's actually do this one. I think this one makes it look really cool. 
And then I'll just, you know, rotate that. And we can just do some of the magic here, some of the numbers, 180 degrees and zero on the Z axis. And we can do something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll just do the chain and I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna call that good, but I'm gonna show you how that looks on the, on the simulation. So let's go ahead and change this. Perhaps I can change this to global. And it doesn't need to be perfect because I am, it's just a placeholder. Okay, and we can just rotate it right about here. And then I just make it a little bit bigger. And of course, if you wanted to do like I did on the demo, you can do the, you know, the upper lip, the lower lip, you can do the mouth if you wanted to do something too on the mouth. Another thing that you can also, that you can also do that I was playing with it. If you go back to the face mask, this actually has a proxy object and it has, you know, the different rules that you can set up by using Mars, which are super powerful. And this proxy is looking for a condition of the face. This will all automatically create it for you, but you can, you know, of course, change it if you like it to. But what I wanted to show you is, let's say that you add a component here on the mouth. Let's say that we add a pizza on the mouth or you add maybe something that you're eating and you want to put it on the mouth. You can also have what's called a face expression action. And I'm not, I'm not going to be covering this in this video, but I'm just going to mention it to you just in case. So let's say that you only want to show an object whenever the mouth is open. You can also select this. And you can have this be, this is a Unity event, so you can tie this to another object that will therefore enable an object in the mouth. Or you can also do the same thing if the mouth, mouth is getting closed and you have multiple events here that you can tie to that are really, really cool. If you wanted to, you know, start getting more detail into your face expression. So what I'm gonna do now, just to call it good, is I'm gonna just go ahead and hit play. Let's go ahead and put perhaps this one over here so we have more real estate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play. You're gonna see that now. Oh, and let me do, let me go ahead and hit play again. I don't want to see this visualizer. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that and then hit play again. That way we don't see the spheres and we can see Amy's face with the screws on the face, the pizza on the chin, the hand on the nose, and then also the, you know, the eyeballs. And another thing that we can also do is we don't only have Amy here, but we have Escoin in here. I hope I'm saying his name right. And if you hit play, you're gonna see that you can now test this is not 100% accurate, but it gives you a lot of insight of what you can do if you want to, if you want to be testing this. You can also record yourself, but you have to buy a tool that will allow you to capture that face motion information. So I'll just put that information in the description of this video. And if you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.